Hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, we will be talking about BuildScaler, uh, which is Elastic Horizontal Pod Autoscaler Framework for CI workloads. Uh, before we do that, uh, I would like to uh, give a give a shout to my colleague uh, Henry Pritcher, who was who is co-author of of this presentation, uh, but unfortunately he couldn't make it to Valencia. Uh, but he contributed to the slides, and I will play a demo while he will present the build scaler uh, later. So Henry is a platform engineer at Iloto, uh, and here's a link to his blog. Uh, my name is Paweł Bojanowski. I'm also a platform engineer at Iloto. Uh, we work together with Henry. Um, here's also a link to my blog and, and my GitHub. Uh, so let's talk about uh, continuous integration, continuous uh, deployment platforms first. Um, so so the, the continuous integration service uh, is basically a platform uh, for running your builds. Or, or your deployments. Uh, and it's usually provided as a platform, as a service, meaning that there is a central component where you create your account, uh, you link your repositories, uh, and, the, and you run your builds inside uh, their platform. Uh, but what's, what's been happen happening in, in the past few years, uh, more and more CI providers uh, are start offering their agents, so you can self-host. Um, meaning that you can run the agent or runners or workers, whatever the CI provider calls them, um, in your own environment. And the example of these are our BuildKite agent or GitLab runner, uh, Circle CI and, and GitHub Actions also provide uh, their agent as, as binaries or as Docker images. Uh, and we may ask, ourselves, uh, why would people want to self-host agents, right? Uh, so from our conversations with customers, uh, we think there are four main reasons. Uh, first is security. Uh, usually there is, uh, there is a lot of internal systems or components which are dependencies for your builds. And uh, usually you don't, you don't want to expose uh, those systems to the open internet. Uh, so that could be a reason. Uh, so those uh, those components are usually accessed only from the private network. Uh, the the other reason could be a cost. Um, in a certain scale, uh, it may be probably uh, more optimal cost-wise to to run your agents in your environment, especially if uh, if you have those internal dependencies uh, and your agent can run in the same network or or in the same same cluster. Uh, which is a good segue to the the third reason, which is speed. Uh, so to speed up your builds, uh, probably you want to run the agents close to your, your dependencies, uh, dependent systems. Uh, so there is like a small network latencies, um, which uh, which makes your developers happy because eventually we all want uh, fast builds. Uh, and the fourth reason could be a uh, customized, customized running environment. Uh, so some, if, if you decide to run your builds in the CI provider platform uh, and you need some tooling uh, that, that you develop internally, um, you probably don't want to install that tooling on each build because it will contribute to the, to the build times, right? Uh, and if you decide to self-host, you can just build a Docker image, which has all the tooling already installed, or, or you can run on the VM, which uh, also has those components. Uh, so yeah, a lot of people uh, decide to self-host CI agents. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, usually CI, CI providers uh, gives you the Docker image uh, or a binary. So we can build a Docker image. Uh, so you may want to run your CI agents as Docker containers. Um, and there is a question how to orchestrate those containers. And this is where Kubernetes comes into play. Um, so yeah, for example, uh, we, we will focus now on more concrete example where we will try to run BuildKite agent in our Kubernetes cluster. 
so you can configure build kite agent provides Docker image, so you can configure just the deployment uh, with fixed number of replicas. I, I guess that's a pretty well known manifest for everybody. Uh, and so yeah, our build kite agent is running and things are good, right? Uh, but the problem is how you can auto scale the deployment. Uh, so as as your usage of CI grows, uh, maybe those ten replicas are not enough. Uh, the build queue is is just getting bigger, and the devs are waiting for their builds to to start running. Right. Uh, so Kubernetes comes with a built-in feature for auto scaling. It's called horizontal pod auto scaler, uh, and I think it's also pretty well known and recognized feature. Um, and this is how the how the manifest for for our horizontal pod auto scaler for the build kite agent could look like. So you can specify minimum and maximum number of replicas, uh, and things are good, right? Um, so not necessarily because by default uh, by default the decision of scaling up or down is made on resource usage of of one agent. Uh, and you can easily think about situation where the resource usage is a not good indicator when to scale up or down. Uh, say that uh, basically resource usage fluctuates during the build. So, uh, and agents are usually developed in a way that they can handle one build at the time. Um, and if you don't don't reach uh, the resource usage threshold. Kubernetes won't add another replica. So the build queue just, just keeps growing, right? Um, so we need a better way to, a uh, better indicator when to auto scale, where to scale up. Um, and fortunately, Kubernetes also offers you a way uh, to not only scale based on resource usage, but also on the custom metrics and external metrics. Um, so the external metrics uh, is external metric is basically API provided by Kubernetes, which you can use in the horizontal pod autoscaler definition. Um, and we will try to make our um, CI horizontal pod autoscaler better by using external metrics, uh, which will be data from CI platform. Um, yes, so. The good news is, uh, in the build kite context, you can already do that. There are open source tools to do that. Um, so there is build kite build uh, agent build kite agent matrix, uh, which you can deploy to your Kubernetes cluster uh, just next to your agent. And what what the build kite agent metric does is basically pulls build kite API on regular interval, uh, gets the real time metrics of usage of or traffic, if you like, uh, of your CI system. And then it exposes metrics on, on the metrics endpoint in a Prometheus format. Uh, so that's cool, but you cannot use Prometheus format metrics in horizontal pod autoscaler. So actually, you also need to um, use service, which is called Prometheus adapter. And it's a translation layer between Prometheus metrics and Kubernetes metrics, uh, external metrics API. Uh, but to do that first, you also need Prometheus server, uh, which will first scrape the metrics from build kite agent metrics endpoint, right? Uh, so if you can try to visualize that, uh, it, it looks like this. So uh, what we eventually want to have is, is this build kite busy agent percentage metrics. Uh, as an external matrix in Kubernetes. Um, so we can use that in horizontal pod autoscaler and set, um, I want, my target is to have 60% uh, of busy agents. Um, so if you deploy all those services to your Kubernetes cluster, um, this can be achieved, right? Uh, however, there are two issues with that approach. Um, so the first issue um, is basically a chain of events that needs to happen uh, from T1 
where the usage metrics are exposed by BuildKite API to T2, where they are actually in your Kubernetes cluster and you can use them. Uh, and those events are basically BuildKite agent metrics needs to call the BuildKite API, right? Then Prometheus serve server needs to scrape the metrics from, from BuildKite agent metrics. And then Prometheus adapter needs to be configured so it scrapes uh, the metrics from Prometheus server just to put them in, expose them as uh, external metrics API. Uh, so that's a lot of operational complexity for something that should be actually quite simple, right? Because at the end of the day, it's, it's just transferring data from one API to another. Uh, and this is exactly why we decided to create a build scaler, uh, which addresses those two, com uh, th those two issues. Uh, so build scaler simply pulls the um, metrics from BuildKite API and exposes them as external metrics in your cluster. Uh, so there is... Uh, there's uh, not so much operational complexity, right? Because uh, now instead of uh, deploying, con uh, deploying, ma maintaining, and uh, preparing configuration for all those free services, uh, you only need, need this for one service. And also, uh, if you are using BuildScaler, your real-time metrics from CI provider are still real time-ish, right? Because uh, there is actually small delay be be before, uh, between metrics being exposed and build kite and uh, scale up action actually happening. Um, and uh, if we get back to previous approach, there is actually a big delay because there are kind of like three gears that needs to turn and so, Basically, scrapes need to happen on regular interval on those free services. Um, so, BuildKite addresses those uh, uh, those those two issues. Uh, and now I will play a demo with my colleague Henry presenting uh, the build scaler in action. Hello, everybody. It's Henry from Eloto. And I'm here to demonstrate uh, BuildScaler, a service to expose the continuous integration and continuous development metrics um, to your Kubernetes environment. It, what it does is that it takes metrics from uh, platforms or services such as BuildKite, CircleCI, and Flare Builds, and then expose those metrics uh, as Kubernetes metrics so you can use them in, for your own purpose um, inside your Kubernetes cluster. So first, let me show you what we have running in that server that I have here. So here I have a few um, pods running. Here we have the BuildScaler API server, which is the service I'm demonstrating right now. Uh, and we have the BuildKite agent, which is a, a built agent for the BuildKite CI um, a service. Uh, so if we uh, look at it here, we can see that pod has been created by a deployment. And that deployment is piloted by what we call a uh, horizontal pod uh, autoscaler. Um, so that or the horizontal pod autoscaler um, takes a, met a Kubernetes metrics and scale the number of pod based on that metric. Um, so here we can see the metrics. Is the metric is the build guide busy agent percentage. This is the metric that's supplied by build scaler. Its value is zero now because there's uh, no build running. Its target value is 60. Uh, so because this is a percentage, what that means is that if more than 60% of the workers are servicing a build, then the horizontal pod autoscaler will scale up the number of workers. Um, we have here, we have a few limits, a uh, maximum of tw 20 workers, so we don't spin up too many workers if you know all the workers are busy. And here we have a few things to like make the, make the scale up and down go a little bit uh, faster for uh, the demo. Okay, 
So now let's uh, let's kick off some builds to see the scaling in action. So because we're uh, creating, we're going to create three builds, and that will should spin up five workers because um, this way we will have like only 60% of the workers uh, being busy. So let's have a look and a worker, another worker has already been created here. We can see uh, that's the Bilkite agent worker here. Um, and if we go back to our pipeline, we can see that all of the job seems to be running. If we go back here, yes, indeed, we can see more agents have been spinned up and more agents are going to be spinned up because we're not quite the horizontal pod auto scatter is not quite at 60%. Uh, uh, we need two more pods for this. And so here we'll see we now have five pods. Now the horizontal pod auto scaler will have its target at 60, so it will not create more um, pods. And so while we wait for the bills to finish, let me show you the um, metrics that are being returned uh, by the build scaler. So here kubectl talks to um, the um, control plane, but because of that URL, the control plane actually forwards that request to the build scaler API server that we saw before. So the build scaler API server returns all those values to the control plane and then returns it uh, to um, kubectl. Okay, so now let's see what's happening with our build. We can see uh, it's they're been running. Let's wait for them to finish and see what happens with our pods. Okay, the first test passed. So anytime soon now, we should see the number of workers decrease because the horizontal pod auto scaler will be below its limit. So here we can see one has been deleted as soon as the next build is finished. It's going to terminate. Here we can see another build terminating. And now there's only one build running, so we should probably have like another one terminating soon. Yes. And yeah, they're going to be terminating gradually one after the other. And that's it. That's it. We've now scaled up the number of workers based on the number of build, scaled it back down to the minimum number of uh, worker required. And that's all. Thank you for listening. I hope to talk to you soon. Okay, to quickly summarize, uh, we currently support BuildKite, Circle CI, and Flare.Build, uh, but actually adding another CI provider is quite easy. Uh, the, the service itself is open source under Apache uh, to the old, um, license. Uh, and actually, it is not open sourced. And now we are entering a danger zone. And I will make it public right now. OK, so it's uh, now public. Uh, the two more things I wanted to mention. Uh, so first, the horizontal pod autoscaler API is quite flexible. You can specify various policies, stabilization windows. Uh, and really, if you have like a data to pilot the autoscaling, I think um, it's a great component to, to build your CI fleet of, of agents. Uh, probably, uh, if, 
if you decide to go with that approach, at, at some point you will also need to look for uh, auto-scaling solution not only for workloads, but also for compute. Uh, and shameless plug, we have a product called Luna, uh, which works great with that. And uh, I'm happy to talk about it probably after uh, the presentation. So thanks for your attention. And if there are any questions, I will be happy to answer those.